you all, I'm looking at a book here. <clears throat> it's a very interesting book. Uh, and this book was written by Elizabeth Dowling Taylor. Uh, let me show it to you. It, I found it to be a very interesting book. It's called The, uh, the Original Black Elite. Daniel Murray and the Story of the Forgotten Era. And on the page are a bunch of black folks dressed in nine. I mean, they dressed to the T. New York Times best-selling book. All right? It's quite thick, as you can see. And the back here gives you a story of who Elizabeth Dowling Taylor is... And you see W. E. B. Du Bois. Uh-huh. Brother Du Bois' name pops up here. Called the Talented Tenth. I was reading this book. And as I was thinking of a title for this Juanita Bynum story here that I wanted to do on my show tonight. The word gilded came up. Now, typically, you won't hear the word gilded used for African Americans uh, because of the, our past. Although we've had Black Wall Streets, not just in Tulsa, but Black Wall Street was in vari various cities ar around the country, even here in Chicago, called Bronzeville. Gilded, when I did the Google search, because that's the word that popped in my head, Gilded is uh, wealthy and privileged, what it, what it means. And if you look on YouTube, you'll see the Gilded Age, but black folks are not part of that prestigious age. Gilded also, I noticed as I was coming up, was I did see Gilded in amongst uh, African Americans in church. Baptist, Pentecostal, gilded. Many of his black families were well off based off of uh, the donations that came in through tithes, through offerings, and through dealings. And today, it's nothing different other than more money has been made through prophetic lies, witchcraft, and manipulations. Today I'm going to try to be as fair as humanly possible when it comes to our dear sister, Juanita Bynum. I've known her longer than all probably most of you who are watching this show today because my first introduction to her was in 1987 as I was dating my ex-wife. I didn't realize the connection that the Bynums had with my ex-wife. But I'll have to let y'all know what that is for those of you who have never heard the story. And I'm going to take you through her life as y'all saw it and say, what is it? And who did this? See you in 60. you thinking and where the topics are hot feel free to comment whether we agree or not cause he's got something to say sir walter jones sir walter jones he's got something to say sir walter jones sir walter jones jones Come on in. The water's fine. Yeah. Oh. Do yeah. Hello, everybody. So on the Soul of the Jones show, I'm he. It is a evening edition. 
baby. Come on in, the water's fine, water's fine. How y'all ready? Y'all doing fine? Good, good, good. Listen, y'all, um, I want to talk about this. I do know at the time of this recording, uh, it is the month of September. Uh, the fall is coming here in Chicago, especially. The weather's pretty good, but next week, week after that, probably we'll start going into fall months, fall weather. Weather, although there's no such thing as from summer to fall, we go from summer to winter. Just know that. Juanita Biden lived here. I don't know if she was born here, but all we know in Chicago was her and her family. <clears throat> At the time of this recording, she is uh, hosting an institution, a prayer institute, uh, that she's charging a $1,500 rate uh, for various services that she's going to offer in this, she says, not a conference. We'll talk about that towards the end of the show because I'm going to give, take you through the life of Juanita Bynum to see um, if anything makes sense for what she's doing now. I've watched many of the videos, I played maybe one or two, of people who did remarks and responses to her institute, her conference. Many were f very funny, others were very gripping, some, some was downright you know, chopping her neck off because of this payment plan that she had. Uh, the people are saying that you should not be uh, charging for uh, to teach people how to pray. And I get all of it. And usually when I come live, when I talk about some people, I go back into the history. So let me tell some of you who are already getting ready to say, get on with it. This show may not be for you. Me, the bunkers in whom we call our community, we like to take you through history, backstory, retro, reflect, you see, because many ignorant people come on the show, watch the show, and they are so in a hurry to get to the salaciousness, and I'm going to ask you to go to Larry Reed, you see, because what Larry Reed is going to do for the first at least 12 almost 15 minutes in his intro, he's going to sell you a lot of products. And you all are going to sit there patiently and wait because you know that he's going to bring some receipts. So you're willing to go through all his prophetic mumble jumbo, pay eight eighty eight and 88 cents for this a month and all this mess. And he'll do that for 15 minutes in the intro. And you'll sit there patiently to get the dirt. That's how lazy some of you are. And then you come over here for... Uh, uh, a backstory of how things work, and you're like, mm, no, no, nah, I don't want to hear that. You talk too slow. Get to the point. You need to go somewhere else, cause this show is obviously not for your lazy behind. All right, so let's get into this. Uh, I got married in 1989. Prior to that, two years as I was 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 dating and courting this young lady, I didn't realize I was courting the auntie. Uh, the I'm sorry, the, the niece of the Juanita family. They adopted her and brought her in because my ex-wife at the time was didn't really have much, didn't really have a family, all right? I'm, and I'm, I'm trying to be as careful as possible because I want to protect. I always protect anybody I've ever dated or married or what have you. I always protect their integrity, all right? So in 87, she introduced me to Juanita Bynum's mother, which was auntie. Bynum and the husband, all right? They were a powerful couple in the church of God in Christ. Very anointed uh, mother and father, past pastor and we call first lady, but, but she was an evangelist. And it was a very small storefront-like church, very humble beginnings. And we uh, loved and adored Auntie Bynum and Uncle Bynum, loved them. No scandal on their lives. And all you knew from them was that they took people into their homes. And that's where I met them. All right. And so I remember going, having to go to the home, the house, the Bynum house. And, you know, you didn't have to ring bells and stuff. You just walked into Bynum homes. Some of us even had the key. Mom, Mom Bynum would say, here's a, here's a key. You just come in when you, if you got, if you're hungry, there's a refrigerator right there. That was the Bynum's home, and it reminded me of Martin Luther King's home. If you go to Atlanta, Georgia, and go to where his boyhood home is, when you, the tour guy was telling us that every office of the house was filled with people, almost around the clock, 
uh, during that time uh, of, of um, what do you call it, um, where the Jim Crow era was going on, blacks could not just stay in any hotels, right? And then they had this, this book called, the thing is called the Green Book. And when you traveled from place to place, you had to go to certain places that was in the Green Book. Martin Luther King's father was part of that book. And people would come there and, and Martin Luther King's dad uh, opened his doors to the students, you know, there from Morehouse and, and all these other, all right. So his house was always filled with, 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 with kids, with, with adults, whoever. And the Bynum home was the same way. And so I had to be there for Thanksgiving and, and birthdays and Christmas and, you know, whatever. I was there. Juanita was there and the brother Tom. Tom started a ministry, or something oil. Somebody will correct me in the comment section. And he was one of the ones who was uh, very instrumental in starting this praise and worship movement that you all have today in the black church. Many of you don't know that. Mm -hmm. Tom Bynum, Juanita Bynum's brother, New Wine, I believe it is. Thank, thank you, Bronia Scott. Was one of the fathers. Was it New Wine or Fresh Oil? Priscilla says Fresh Oil. Okay, which one is it, y'all? It's New Wine. Well, uh, Tom Bynum was one who started off that this flavor y'all have today. In Chicago, you had to go to Tom Bynum for that. And his sister, Juanita, would be sitting on the front row. And he would bring her up on the stage and then she would minister through song. We didn't know her as a preacher. You understand? So I would come and visit. My co-host, um, Alvin Carter, was one of the musicians of New Wine Ministry. Then things start to take off for Tom. And before you know it, you turn on t the TBN. I don't know if it was PTL or I think PTL might have debunked or defunct or whatever the word is. And so you would see Tom Bynum on TBN and some of these Christian channels um, speaking. I don't know if Tom was the one that really got Juanita up in the upper echelons of the generals of ministry, but she got up in there. Okay. And before you know it, we didn't see much of her in Chicago. She started to travel the country uh, preaching and teaching. Uh, and in walk, no more, she no more sheets. The conference that T.D. Jakes held. That conference was in 1997. I remember turning on the TV and there she was. And Chicago was proud to see our dear sister on the big stage telling her story, mm -hmm. telling her story. So um, let me see, I think I do have here somebody on eBay <laughs> have the, uh, the VHS copy here. He's selling for $49. This is the VH, yeah, uh, Money to Buy Them Singles Conference, all right? It was it was beautiful. It was huge. It was it was gripping. It was something uh, that we had not seen before to that magnitude, and it changed. It 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 um when you saw all those women uh, there in their presence, uh, it caused many of the churches to take notice of who Juanita Bynum was, and before you knew it, it was very difficult to get her very hard I remember my own mother uh, booked her for one of their anniversaries and she did say she would do it and then some things happened all right that thing that happened was somebody bigger called wanting to bind him and offered her a little bit more so she went on the count the cancellation scene and went on to the bigger ticket scene this is typical for many of you who look at smaller churches as small churches. And then in July 22nd, uh, what's the year? 2002. I'm giving y'all the timeline of things that was going on. 
in 2002, you then started to see um, Juanita in all her glory. Now I'm gonna have to pull my uh, some of my sound here so y'all can hear it. Uh, hold on, y'all. This was obviously the wedding of Tom. I'm sorry, <laughs> of Juanita Bynum and y'all know who the bishop <laughs> here okay this wedding here was the talk of the town because it was a multi-million dollar <laughs> wedding uh it took forever for this wedding to go forth i mean you you it was aired on tv and it might have lasted for six hours straight <laughs> okay and uh it was it was a sight to see all right as you all already know that that wedding uh as elaborate as it was um only just a few weeks later it feel felt like <laughs> let me let me plug this in just a few weeks later we started to see signs of some type of abuse. Six tonight, Atlanta police are actively searching for the husband of a well-known television minister. Juanita Bynum tells Atlanta police her husband, Bishop Thomas Weeks, savagely beat her in a hotel parking lot last night. Fox Size Morse Diggs is live in South Atlanta tonight with the exclusive details. Morse? Russ, allegations of extreme violence are what's outlined in this Atlanta police report. And when a bellhop saw Reverend Juanita Bynum being kicked out here in the Renaissance parking lot, he came to her rescue. On her website, the followers of Reverend Juanita Bynum know her to be a forceful voice, especially for women. Her TV ministry expanded to a national audience, stresses empowerment with men and women sharing a partnership in a relationship. Last night, police say Bynum allegedly became a victim of domestic abuse. Photographs taken by a relative and released to Fox 5 show her injuries, bruises. Police say the incident occurred at this hotel that sits alongside Hartsfield-Jackson Airport. According to a relative, the Reverend Bynum and her husband, who's also a minister, are in the middle of a separation. He asked for a meeting last night, and she agreed to that in the hotel dining room. This relative tells me that that meeting did not go well and the husband left abruptly. Bynum followed and a few more words were exchanged in the parking lot and then things got ugly, according to an Atlanta police report. Juanita Bynum stated her husband, Thomas Weeks, choked her, pushed her down, kicked and stomped her in the Renaissance parking lot. The bellman that was there at the hotel that intervened uh, because of the, her being assaulted so bad he had to intervene. That bellhop pulled the two apart in the parking lot and is being labeled a hero by Bynum's family. Atlanta police visited Bynum at the hospital and documented the injuries. Uh, multiple bruising, also was a swelling uh, with the victim too, and she was heard had to be uh, taken to the hospital and actually seen by hospital personnel. Now, she did not suffer any broken bones right now. Reverend Juanita Bynum is being kept at an undisclosed location. Live from South Atlanta, I'm Morse Diggs, Fox 5 News. All right, Morse, thank you. All right. And then the talk went around. Obviously, people believe that Juanita Bynum was the, the well, the, the culprit. She was the reason behind Weeks doing what he did. Somebody said that and she said, your mama, and he turned around and hauled out and, you know, um, Domestic abuse is not funny, and there's nothing funny about it. Um, when I saw it, I was dismayed and discouraged and sad that uh, two people who was looked to as their, a power couple would turn around after this and make a public scene like that, and it made the church look really, really, really bad. Um, not that the church needed their help because we already looked bad. And then in 2000, August 2011, the Juanita Bynum, then she began to type in tongues. <laughs> All right. She was typing in tongues. And uh, let me see. I don't, I don't think I have the, um, I do have something here. The video didn't come up, but um I thought I had something here on her 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 tongue thingy. 
um, it might I think it went away but <laughs> she made uh, she talked about the, her typing in tongues there was this art there was an article that mentioned it and uh, let me see there's a video here let me see what this video is. all right here here Evangelist and self-professed prophetess Juanita Bynum has sparked curiosity among some internet users in the Christian community for several comments on the minister's Facebook page where she appeared to type in tongues. I encourage you guys to research this as well. In the third post, published about a minute later, the tongues text started to appear. Gird them up in the spirit, give them a mind to pray like never before. We call on you. Jesus, you are our help and our hope. Then she closed out here where it says at the bottom, you God, you are our help and our hope. Let me break down what's highlighted in red. So let's break this down, starting with the first three letters. Kun. In Hebrew, the word kun means to be erect. It means to set up. It's <laughs> okay, I don't have time. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> his brother tried his best to break it down. A cold cracking, what they called it. <laughs> okay. That was quite interesting. All right, you guys can go on YouTube and check that out. Uh, and then let's see, uh, 2002, on the radio show Frank Sky of Frank Ski and Wanda Smith, uh, he's speaking about her having been with a woman. Um, this is in 2012. It is time for your inspirational vitamin. And Dr. Juanita Bynum was just with us, and she spoke on the power of purpose. Listen to what she had to say. If you're going through that struggle today. Yes. You've seen it in so many people. I'm in it. You've experienced it yourself. Absolutely. How does somebody come back from trauma that people are facing these days? Well, I think you and Wanda both know that I've been there yes. and had those same feelings like, you know, this is it. But I think that um, the minute I allowed somebody to help me to take full responsibility for my life and... Uh, not doing the blame game to say, oh, this is their fault is the re to the reason exactly. why I'm where I am. Exactly. I took full responsibility in every area because every choice that I made, you know, nobody put a gun to my head. These were my choices. That's right. And I made those choices uh, due to a lack of wisdom. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not uh, embarrassed about my conversions, and that's why I'm not insecure about being around people. Now, I need you all to pay close attention to what she's saying here, even though this was many, this was many years ago. Uh, every time Juanita Biden does something that is embarrassing to the public, she says the same thing here. Pay close attention to her last few scandalous moves. She says the same thing here. You got to go back to 1997 with the No More Sheeps. The same language. For those of you who are maybe in the field of psychology and counseling. Some of you might catch it, okay? I caught it right away. Who mind it here? Choices, That's right. and I made those choices uh, due to a lack of wisdom. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not uh, embarrassed about my conversions, and that's why I'm not insecure about being around people who have issues and struggles because I've been there, and I've done it all. You know, I've, I've did the drugs. I've been with men. I've been with women. And all, all of it, all of it comes out. And Are you serious? Every, every bit of it. That's my line. That It's not a line. It's my life. That abuse that I suffered was because I attracted after my own kind. That abuse was already sitting in me. I had already abused myself mentally and emotionally for years trying to fill a void that only the power of purpose can fill. And when you, when, when purpose has a place to fill that hole and you keep reaching for everything you can, re you can have sex with 50,000 people, you can do drugs till the cows come home. But the void that you're trying to fill is a void that's been put there by the creator and it's called purpose and destiny. And until you accept that, you're going to walk around wow. with the living dead. Sounds great. 
it sounds quite convincing and this is why these conferences are filled with a lot of women in it and because it's easy the scriptures talk about silly women uh, who who we see a lot and if you say silly if you in the room and say you y'all a bunch of silly women they're gonna run you out of, out of town I'm in a safe place in the bunker so I can tell you these conferences sealed filled with a lot of women silly ones at that no matter what a woman like this says she is going to get all kind of a rounding applauses and amens and shouts and screams and hollers. The emotion is going to rattle the place and it doesn't matter where she lead them down. They're going down. And if someone makes a mistake, uh, I'm, I'm a benefit of the doubt. If they make a mistake, all they have to do to fix it, Brian Karn, is say these words and it will magically disappear. They're magically delicious. They magically dis disappear. Mm -hmm. This is what happens. It happens a lot. All right. And then uh, this is an article that I actually retrieved. From, um, and then there was, she was arrested in April 2013. I'm not going to show that. I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that. Uh, because, again, when people make mistakes and what have you, again, I'm giving benefits of doubts. I've made mistakes. I've been arrested, too. You don't want to focus on stuff that doesn't really make any sense. I'm just trying to focus more so on a lot of the things that she might have said or done and made excuses for. And why is it that you all continue to shower her and allow her to do these things? Because, unfortunately, God's going to judge many of you who are codifying these prophets and prophetists he is going to have to judge you uh, for pushing these people up into these pedestals and putting them on these thrones so that they could rape and pillage our children and the, the, the mental state of these saints who are drinking milk yeah I'm saying all of this and y'all know I don't care who comes after me she's got a harem of women by the multi multi thousands out there who would who will oh they're watching right now obviously and they will be in the comment sections and they will be um rallying to try to get my video taken down because if you do a google search on Juanita Bynum's old stuff it's not that easy to find because she had some company and her team take a lot of that stuff off of the internet she did an internet sweep so you'd have to go to my show, Larry Reed, and Jibes, and other shows in order to find a lot of that stuff. Mm -hmm. Y'all understand? So then she says here, uh, if your pastor don't approve of it, you can't go. This is in 2014. She's trying to lift up the pastors. All right. Father, that's why he gave you a pastor. I'm not getting nobody to say nothing because I don't care what God is leading you to do. If your pastor do not approve of it, you can't go. I feel led. No, you feel like sitting down. Well, pastor, I think you're wrong. The devil is a liar. God ain't never told you to check your pastor. God ain't never gave you permission to correct the man of God. Oh, I'm going to... Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, Lord, yes, I want to talk to you because I'm offended by something you did. How dare you? How dare you? You still wet behind your ears. You are a dumb sheep. How dare you sit in the men of God's office telling him what you don't like about him? How dare you do that? She's helping the men that bring her in. After this conference, after this sermon, many calls came forth to or come and help me with my people who go against some of my teachings and my preachings and some of the laws that I've laid down. You can help me. All right. This video here became a case study for many uh, stronghold men and women who want to keep that stronghold. And this is one of the st uh, strongest manipulative uh, sermons that I've heard in a while. That you cannot try the spirit. 
by the spirit of God, that spirit of your pastor. You can't, you can't correct him. You can't rebuke him. You, you can't ask, tell him or ask him questions. No. Whatever he says goes. And this is the problem we have in Christianity today. And she's one of those problems. God, you told me to do this. Now, I feel him hating on me, so you're going to have to help me. You're going to have to help me, God. That's sweet. So you'd have to go to my show. Okay. I don't know how I came in here, but <laughs> what is that? All right. So that's that. Again, I'm giving you all a timeline. Um, where are we now? That was 2014. 2017, Juanita picks, takes a picture of Jesus. All right. I don't, I don't have it here, but I do have it on, I do have it on YouTube. I know I do. Uh, she takes a picture of, of Jesus. Let's see if I can find it. Hold on. Mm, 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 mm. Yeah, here it is here. All of a sudden I was asleep and it sounded like somebody had about 15 bass drums and it sounded like all of a sudden they just went boom, 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 boom. and I jumped up and I looked around over there right where he's sitting and I said what was that? I said did somebody come in this church and get on the drums while I'm laying here in prayer and sleep and I didn't say nothing to them and so a few hours later he said can I share something with you prophetess he said I heard a rumbling like a plane went low and the building shook he said and it was over in that corner I said I jumped up and I looked in the corner and I saw the same thing I said I heard it too Lisa said I was scared to tell y'all she said but it sounded like a train was coming and the literally Sometimes I laugh so that I won't cry. And it's not a mocking laugh. It's just a laugh of what the heck is going on in Christianity to whereas we have so many people who soaks this. I mean, they take a biscuit and their syrup. Okay, when I was a child, we would put, we, we had syrup sandwiches. Sometimes we were hungry and there was nothing in the refrigerator, so we go get some Wonder Bread <laughs> and put some, take some peanut butter and put it in syrup. <laughs> and we would, 
and take some white bread. Uh, if sometimes we put sugar on the bread and we eat it, that's why some of y'all got some sugar diabetes. <laughs> and we take that and lap up that, and it, it was that was some of the best best meal. Well, that's what's happening here, y'all. That that's what's happening here. Uh, and the people went wild and crazy based off of a, an occurrence of Jesus. And and after this, you start to see, uh, you know, Benny Hinn and other of these sensationalists saying that Jesus is going to show up on the stage with him. All right. This other false fake preacher with the receding headline. What is his name? Who got in trouble with the law? And he they were, he was in court and, and they were asking him about the the house next door who uses it and he what's that boy name with the curly hair and big guy okay who had a little scandal with the, the white gospel uh, artist what's his name all right he talked about how he's, he was having a conference where Jesus was going to show up on the stage and the people by the thousands could not wait for that for Jesus to show up at his place thank you DT David Taylor he took y'all money and went away for months. Y'all ain't seen David Taylor in a while, have you? He, <laughs> he just showed up a few days ago. <laughs> he had never came in. Uh, all right, then where am I now? And then, let's see. In August, October 2017, um, she didn't wait that long from July to August to give us some more sensationalism. That cursing thing is serious. It's no joke. That's why when I'm around people, they always curse, and I just got to just walk off sometime. And sometimes I just got to just not talk. I, I can't be around that. No, because that thing will hijack you. I know what I'm talking about. You be walking around here, and all of a sudden, you drop something and go, oh, shit. Oh, my God, did I just say that? No, you just said that. Because that spirit of transference, that's a... That's a <laughs> It's just, it's just, you cannot make this stuff up, y'all. You can't make this stuff up. You can't make this up. So, all those videos that she erased off of the internet, you all can come to the So Water Drum Show. This show right here is one-stop shop of all of her videos. You don't have to go from video to video. You just come here and I have them all. <laughs> you can try and erase everything, but my staff will find it. <laughs> All right. Let's see. She didn't wait too long. 2017 was a very, very interesting year for her. Uh, as, as she laid out all of her, she showed us mentally who she was in 2017. After she after she took the picture of Jesus in July, then she did her little cussing in October 17, December 2017. Uh, she was. She talked about you all eating chicken doo doo. <laughs> Again, I I have to laugh. I'm so not hearing nobody talk to me. <laughs> so that I won't cry. I'm gonna go to the five minute mark. <laughs> okay, let's see if I can find it. Amos of antibiotics. It doesn't cure it. It calms it. Oh. Well. The chicken says. You sick, you're never going to get help. Eat me and catch the flu. You're never going to get better. The doctor gave me some antibiotics. It doesn't cure it, it calms it. Chicken. Uh, wait, wait, y'all. It speeds up. <laughs> The development of bacteria in your body. If you are eating chicken, you are eating 99.9% .9 full skinned poop. Doo doo. <laughs> Every day that you bite it. I'm not, Lord, why ain't nobody, why ain't nobody saying that? <laughs> why ain't nobody saying that? Why ain't nobody saying that? Why ain't nobody saying that? Why you not saying that? They are. <laughs> That's what chickens eat. They eat fecal matter. Why you not saying nothing? Doodle eater. USDA says more than 99% of chicken parts 
have detectable levels of E. coli indicating fecal contamination. You are almost guaranteed that every time you eat chicken that you are eating actual poop. 1.1 1. 1 million or more Americans, Americans are sick each year from undercooked and diseased chickens. They even have something they call UFM, unidentified foreign material, which means there's a disease or a scab or a sore that's on the chicken and they pass it on anyway. They don't even know what the disease is. But you eating and shouting and speaking in tongues, you're the living and the dead. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. You asking God to give you your life while you're killing your own self. I'm not hearing y'all. And guess what? Everything that you eat is hereditary down on your children. That's why they are crazy too. I'm not hearing <laughs> Boy, <I'll tell> you. <laughs> all right all right you doo-doo eaters i had doo-doo today i plan to eat some <laughs> i plan to eat some doo-doo tonight i have some chinese rice with some chicken in it <laughs> so doo-doo will be in my diet tonight you all with soy sauce. You ever had doo doo with soy? <laughs> Let me see. Okay, then there's a three minute version of Juanita Bynum's 60th birthday. She's dancing. June, this is January 2019. I'm going to have to pull the plug because I'll get a strike. <laughs> Hold on. All right. She's, she's jamming 2019. She's getting down. <laughs> she, oh, man. She's getting down with the get down. Mm, go on, girl. She's dancing to Mary J. Blige. Mm, do it, girl. You better do it. All right. That's 2019 when we were okay with you dancing at your party. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> dance at your party. It's your party, and you can dance if you want to. Dance if you want to. <laughs> Smart Christian channel say as long as she don't blaspheme the pork. <laughs> All right, go on, dance, girl. I had no problem with that. All right, but um, as we <laughs> caught up, at January was was fine. Okay. Um, so then, uh. July came and then she began to rant ab about she had a conference scheduled y'all remember this and the pastor of the co of that conference checked her in the room she wasn't there yet and he was in the room making sure the room was fine he left unfortunately she had her panties laid out on the bed Juanita Bynum went came forth on a Facebook live or one of those lives and she was in tears talking about how he saw <laughs> I can't so this is this is difficult for me to do <laughs> hold on y'all my son wants something uh <laughs> hold on <laughs> my my well, my children need something uh i have to respond hold on this is going to take one second my my babies need me hold on oh boy hold on okay i have to send my baby something because when they need stuff i all things cease <laughs> okay all right, where was where were we? <laughs> where were we? All right, let me let him know. He's good. Uh, Panigate, <laughs> Panigate. Okay, so uh, let me see. Is it on here? Facebook. Wanted to buy him takes to Facebook. Okay, here. Will it play? Uh. Cherry that something had taken place with my room. So I was like, well, okay. Ah.
Right, it's already been enough, and and I'm focused, and I, I just got to preach, so let me just get to the hotel. And so I really didn't pay attention to a lot of the riffraff until I got to my hotel. When I got to my hotel, people, um, I walked in my room in the mini suite, um, which I would show a picture of the hallway when you open my front door. And when I walked into the room and turned the corner, of course, all of my things I laid out the way my secretary always laid them out. My, my, my assistants come in, they always come into hotel rooms before me, they pray before I come in, they, they cover furniture with white sheets, that's just me. Because I don't like to contend with a lot of stuff and people sitting on furniture and having sex on furniture and that's just <laughs> the sensitivity that I have. So they, they cover the chairs or the couches with white sheets and they pray in the room and prepare the room for me. And I get it. I don't have a problem with that. Listen, you book a hotel room, people having sex, you want to come? Somewhere on the bureau, oh my God, this is so embarrassing. They would have on the bed, I travel with a blanket that says, be still and know that I'm God. And they put that blanket on the bed and my pajamas are laid out on the bed. And then on top of the bureau is all of my underwear, my panties, my stockings, my bra, whatever else I put on is laid out on the bureau for when I get ready to minister. Well, at that point, I was told that the pastor had entered my room without me being aware that he had been in my room. And so I said to my assistant, what do you mean he's been in my room? So when I turned around, I said, you mean like been in my room and saw all of my underwear? And she said, yes, ma'am. And I said, well, how do you know that? She said, because the secretary called upstairs, the, what is, was her name, the, the, Marissa, Marissa Brown, Marissa Brown mm -hmm. was the manager on duty, called upstairs, very rude to, to Unique. His wife has profusely apologized to me, but people of God, there's some things that's just distasteful. Some things you just don't cross the lines for. I'd like to have a key to her room. And Unika said, we traveled all over and I So she didn't do the conference because he saw her panties. Uh, so she left. And then pastors who were bit by her start to come forth and talk about their story with Juanita Bynum and her, I've never heard of that. And her issues and panty issues. And non-payment issues and on and all kind of stuff. Uh, so I went live and did what thing called Panigate. All right. Then the couple came li went live and talked about the incident. What really way happened. to contact her now? Uh, hey everyone, my name is Pastor John Moore. This is my wife, Lady K. Just wanted to come and take a minute to address some allegations that were stated on Facebook by. Uh, Dr. Juanita Bynum. Uh, we have been partners uh, in ministry for uh, eight years. Uh, we are committed to excellence and servanthood uh, in our ministry. We have hosted speakers, been hosted, and continue to pursue the calling of God on our lives with excellence and servitude. Uh, recently, uh, during our Breaking Rules conference, um, there were some allegations posted on Facebook that we want to address as a couple, uh, as partners in ministry. All right, it goes on. Occur in this situation, and we want to eliminate uh, all of that. Right, yeah, we do. And, you know, there were um, these allegations that my husband went into Dr. Juanita Bottom's hotel room and looked at her personal things and an insinuation that he even planted a camera. Uh, so today we want to refute those allegations as. Yeah, it was pretty bad. It was sad for this couple, the young couple, as you can see, you know, the wife spoke well of his integrity and they were bit by the gilded. 
as the ness of wanting to buy them strikes again. That was Panicate 2019. She became the Power Rangers in January 2021. <laughs> Alright. Oh, for her birthday. She, she's a Power Ranger. Alright. And she talks about secularism a lot of times in her um <laughs> in in a, in some of her, her shows. But you know, <laughs> this is her being the Power Ranger. <laughs> Why am I laughing? All right. Hey, listen, y'all. I dress up in my 1970s attire when I do my parties. Ain't nothing wrong with that. She want to be a Power Ranger? Go on, do it, girl. Go on, do it. <laughs> Ain't no wrong with that. All right. I can't blame her for doing everything. <laughs> Go on. All right. So that right there was quite interesting. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. That was that was a bonus. That was that was a bonus. All right. And trust me, her staff, ooh, they're coming after me. They're coming after me. All right. Now, and then in walks one of my favorites. Not, uh, t uh, March 2021, she does uh, the great clap back to who? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, uh, no, 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 I'm not scared no more, Linda Wilson. Uh-huh, uh-huh, because I've been, uh, listen, if I'm a Jezebel, uh, I'm God's kind, then I done got confused, uh, and I'm preaching what God told me to preach. He said, don't back up from these people, don't back up no more, uh, hold on my side, uh, you want to say something on my page, I'm going to say something back, uh, that's right, uh, that's right, uh, because you're blind, that's why you can't see, uh, because if you was really of God, uh, you wouldn't even challenge me on this page the bible said if you offended you come to me by myself so i rebuke you in the name of jesus come on bring it bring it bring it bring it bring it bring it because you got the right one. Oh, somebody give him a praise right now next which one of y'all want to say something hold on about kasaya because when I go to your page, you're doing nothing for God. When I go to your page, you are a nobody. When I go to your page, you have no works of the kingdom. Honorable Hosha, when I go to your page, you have no manifestations of the glory of God. This is your biggest platform. Take your shot, because I shall not stop. Yeah, 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 I used to. Yeah, I used to get shook by stuff like that uh, when I was full of my will, uh, when I was the people's prophet. The Bible said he would bless with persecution. So you just informed me I'm on the right track. Uh, hey, Yabo Hosaya, I'm supposed to be persecuted. Uh, I'm supposed to be lied on. Because uh, everybody that's blind, uh, they're supposed to misjudge what they see. Uh, so where is your following? Uh, since you got so much to say, uh, <laughs> where is your following? Uh, when was the last time somebody got out of a wheelchair with you, hey, Linda Wilson? Uh, when was the last time a blinded eye will open with you. I'm not hearing y'all. When was the last time cancer dropped out of somebody's body? Mm. When was the last time you raised the dead? Because I have. Mm. I have. In the power of God. Where is your works? Why you got so many words? Y'all go look her up. Look her up. Look her up. Go to Linda Wilson's page and look her up. And then she begins to bully. She sends out the goons. To go and look her up so that they could go crazy on Linda Wilson. And trust me, I'm sure Linda Wilson probably maybe had to delete her social media presence for a little while to things die down. That is the attribute of an autocracy. <laughs> and see, am I right as a prophet? I don't want y'all to be shook. Donald Trump did this when his, um, those in the Republican Party, when he was trying to run for office in 2015. Uh, in 16, <clears throat> Ted Cruz and others were running against him, and Donald Trump didn't want anybody running against him, especially in his own party, and so he started to share the phone numbers of Ted Cruz and others, all right, and of course all the goons, you know, were calling Ted Cruz. I mean, this is this is what we see here. Had nobody to come to this page. Listen, I survived CNN, lady. I survived NBC and ABC and CBS. I survived every network from around the world. But you're not surviving the So Off the Jones show. 
My face is on every newspaper all over the world. You're too small to shake me. Hold on, I I was on TMZ, the only Christian in the history of the world. My name is in the encyclopedia. I'm number three in history. Mm. According to the internet, I have already made history. So this right here is just the will of God. Excuse me. Someone that big, number three in history, took out her time of praying and ministering to stop to rebuke someone who has nothing. What does that say? Huh? That's like somebody, that's like you trying to prove how humble you are by telling everybody, I'm the most humblest man in the world. <laughs> but you're a little late. <laughs> Somebody said, well, Dr. Biden, why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Because I'm a prophet. That was me. I was saying that. You heard me? Wow. She, she went into the future and heard me say that. Why are you doing that? Because God sent Elijah to confront the lying prophet. Uh -huh. You want to prophesy who I am? Then I'm legal in the scripture to confront you on a mountain. Confront the lying prophet? We're talking about Lyndon Wilson. <laughs> and internet is our mountain. So here we are. Here we are. I'm not hearing nobody talk to me. I'm talking to you. About don't even have 20 <laughs> likes on nothing you have posted. You and still on Linda Wilson? Uh, that's, them, that's them six like people who, who want some attention. Uh, that's them three like people. That's all they want. Watch this. That's them people that don't post nothing but themselves posing all the time with a different outfit on. And that even, listen, that's not what Facebook is for. That's not what social media is for when you're a believer. This is what you do when you are challenged <laughs> like that. It's almost five minutes and you still on Linda Wilson. That's something mental, y'all. That 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 is something. That's mental. That's a sad mental state. All right, don't worry, y'all. I'm getting to. I'm getting close. All right, she justifies dancing to Mary J. Blige. Okay, she tells y'all why she did it. All right, I don't know if it's gonna play or not. Time for some damage control. Damage control. What y'all think about the fact that she was dancing to Mary J. Blige? What y'all think about that? Well, first of all, I don't justify that. Here comes the justification. <laughs> and first of all, watch this. The words are not sensible. Justification number one. <laughs> and they're not provocative. Stop, justification lady. number two. <laughs> but nevertheless, it was a wait. And it was three years ago. Justification number three. <laughs> and watch this. And when you live in the presence of the Lord for a year and a half. Here's what the defenders are waiting for. And you're locked up in the church. And you get on your face before God. And the Lord begin to deal with you. And you get in the presence of the Lord. You can't get up the same. That was three years ago. I'm not the same person I was. Because we all got sloppy. We thought this was about you. I'm not here. And then we got sloppier, some of us, when the pandemic came. But I had an encounter with God in this building, on this very floor. Who am I talking to? Let's get something straight. We could care less about you <laughs> listening to secular music. Really? Where the problem comes in is when you place what you believe on other people calling it sin. Let's face it, you got caught. The graceful thing to do is to take the L and move on. Listen to Mary J all you want. <laughs> Just stop telling others they can't or God can't use them. All right. Preach, white woman. <laughs> you better preach. <laughs> that white woman preach. That computer white woman preach. <laughs> you all right. So she danced to Mary J. Bly in 2019 and then... Uh, this year, she rebuked y'all for listening to secular music, said it was of the devil, not realizing that the internet never die. <laughs> they, they never die. Your stuff will always be there. I don't care how many companies you pay to sweep yourself off the internet. That stuff is there. We got copy, paste, and snapshots, and um, we got uh, our phones now can record stuff. Uh, screen co records, all right? So it never go away. So when content creators start showing her jamming on the one, 
she comes up with this same excuse. Remember the excuse I stopped the video on several videos prior when I said this is the excuse she has always been using? She used it again here. So you all, are y'all doing a mental analysis of her? Okay. I'm hoping you're keeping abreast. And now we're here, y'all. September, uh, in, let's see where we want to go. She does this prayer institute. Okay, let's go and find that. Now, what the Lord is, is compelling me. All right, listen to what she's saying about why she is offering this prayer institute. Okay, first of all, let me first tell y'all what was going on here as we are now finally caught up. This is the Prayer Institute. It is $1499. It's a $500 discount from $1999. Four week intense, intensive. All right. Here's what your package includes two hours. All right. Of intensive, seven sessions, QA at the end. All right. The Prayer Institute, you get a tote bag, you get a, a Prayer Institute binder. You get a, a journal, you get a certificate, uh, mantling of a full prayer shawl, all right? She, she, she robes you, okay? And then sacred anointed oil is, uh, I guess, sprinkled on you? I don't, I don't know. I'm not sure, all right? So that, that's what's going on there. Now, <clears throat> uh, this, this, this prayer institution... <clears throat> I do not have a problem with people trying to do something to enhance the people of God uh, in anything spiritual, and it may cost a fee. I sure don't. I don't. I host the Sunday School University every Tuesday night, 7 o'clock Central, on Zoom for free of charge. I don't ask any money for it. No. <clears throat> and then on Thursday, I do a tutoring session for that class for the same people who want to ask more time, want more time with the teacher. I don't charge for that either. No. But what all of these free classes will be leading up to is the paid course that I will be offering while I will be teaching the book of Revelation, the book of Daniel, the book of e Ezekiel, and on and on on my website, SundaySchoolUniversity.org. Okay. You can go. You don't have to go there because it's not really up yet. But the, the URL is there, and you'll just see me standing there. All right. I will be offering a class there. All right. The class is ninety-seven dollars for the whole year, and then it renews every year. Ninety-seven dollars. All right. So I don't have a problem with people charging for master classes. Not at all. Absolutely not. The problem here is what this class is for. You see, my class is, is instructing people on how to interpret the scriptures. Somebody might say, well, you, you're charging for the word of God. No, I'm charging you like your church charge you. For anybody who say that I will be charging for the word of God, you need to stop paying your tithes and your offerings. Stop giving your pastor a salary. Stop paying the musicians to play the piano, the organ, and the drums, and the bass. Do not give any money or to pay any dues to the choir or the praise team. All right, don't don't get don't pass out any monies in the church for anything ministry wise. Don't do it. Don't don't just don't do it. All right, if you are offended by me charging $97 for a master class on how to break down the word. As a matter of fact, the Bibles that you have in your, in your house, you paid for it. And if you didn't pay for that Bible, you paid for the word. All right. And if you didn't pay for it, somebody paid for it and then gave it to you. <laughs> you should return it. If you are offended that somebody paid for the word. All right. So my 97 lousy dollars, is for uh, the maintenance to keep the website up and going and for the staff that I'm going to have to bring in to keep this going. I have to pay them $97 <laughs> to 
which is basically free for my years of instruction. So I'm not against Juanita Bynum charging for a type of master class whatsoever. And many of you who have classes know the problem is what the class entails. This is the problem. And the person in whom hosting a class, this is the problem. It's the problem. All right. So she's telling y'all what the class is for. That is time to teach next level prayer. That's right. If you would. Next level prayer. Intercessor that is watching. You are a prophet that is watching. You are a pastor that is watching. The Lord opened up to me the libraries of heaven as it relates to prayer. And, and this isn't something that I feel that I need to stand and try to convince you of. Nobody, nobody, and I mean nobody walk through what I have walked through in the last 15 years back in 2007 and losing everything, even almost my mind. And you come out looking like what you have been through. That has to be she said. Nobody, nobody has experienced what she has experienced. You have to listen to her cold words to see where she is struggling mentally. A person that understands that there's a secret to this thing called prayer and God is ready to reveal those secrets to you uh, doing that. My question to you all, is there a secret to prayer? I'd like to know to you all. Is there a secret funnel or tunnel or bunker or place that you all don't know about? And she's going to tell y'all what that is. Is there a secret place? I need a secret place. Mm -hmm. Need a secret place. Season, I want to tell you about uh, just a little experience that I had when I felt like the Lord was transitioning me to next level prayer. I, during my warfare years and my trial of the Lord years, I would go into the prayer room and I would... I would start wailing and praying and praying and praying. And, and, and I just felt like I wasn't getting anywhere. And, and God, where are you? And, and one of the things that, that I learned and listen to this, and this is going to bless you. I promise you, this is going to bless you. There are three reasons why the Lord would be silent. And we're talking about prayer. We're talking about next level prayer. Number one, the first reason that the Lord would be silent is when the Lord is working on something in you. Okay, I can't go no further with that. All right? Uh, prayer should not be mysterious or a secret. All right? Because if you all right now want to pray but don't know what to pray for, what do you do? Hmm? I'd like to know in the comment section. What do you do? I'm trying to help you. I'm getting ready to save you $1,499. The scripture tell you when you don't know what to pray for, what kicks in? Can somebody put it in the comment section so that I can put it on the Jumbotron and 700 people are watching me right now. I'm getting ready to save y'all at 700. Hey, Alexa. How much is 700 times $1,500? 700 times 1,500 U.S. dollars is 1,050,000 U.S. dollars. She said 1 million. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know that. <laughs> Eva says, I asked the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So the scripture says, that the Holy Spirit makes intercessions, not tongues. Ain't no tongues here. You have to read all of it. Read all of it. The Holy Spirit makes intercessions with moanings, groanings. Here's what we know is not tongues because it says that you do not utter. So your mouth is closed. 
a mute person, a person with his mouth sewn shut with needle and thread, can't utter this. And the spirit then begins to speak on your behalf. I just saved y'all $1,499. No secret. The only secret is the secret place of the most high. He, God himself. <laughs> now, um, so she got mad at you all for ousting her like that. And she went in her car and told y'all, about yourselves okay she always play her music <laughs> she always play that music 35 plus years um right. have done nothing but been um a pioneer in the things of prayer and and helping on next level prayer and that's 14 hours of teaching and you're going to receive your conference package, which is your bag and your, your journal. And of course, I'm going to consecrate you at the end and put a full length prayer shawl on you and give you your certificate stamped with my seal of my ministry saying that you have gone through the course and you've taken the course. It is a school. It is not a revival. It is not a conference. It is a school. It is not a revival. It is not a conference. But when you keep watching the video, then she says conference. <laughs> I'm not going to play that part. I'm just not. You can watch it yourself. All right. Everything is online. <laughs> Everything is online. All right. Now, <laughs> I was listening to Damon Richardson uh as he was talking about it i think i'm gonna go to you have, yeah you have kept my word and have not here. defiled my name so what she does here is let me go ahead and pull that up how new age how occultic all right let's go back let's go back and no one will close who closes and no one opens i know your works look i have placed before you an open door that no one can close because uh, you have but little power. You have, yet you have kept my word and have not defiled my name. So what she does here is, let me go ahead and pull that up. Um, she comments on that in this teaching about an open door and prayer. This is what she says. Just listen to this. Listen to how, how new age, how occultic, how unbiblical and just how completely foreign to biblical prayer uh, this whole thing sounds. She says, I want to go in my, I want to go in my prayer life to the God world. And I mentioned this in the video that I did on uh, Juanita Bynum about five years ago, mentioned the very same thing. I want to go in my prayer life to the God world. Never heard of that before. Anybody ever heard of the God world? I want to go to another dimension in prayer. I want to go to the realm where prayer is answered. So already we're talking about a God world, another dimension and a realm. Really, really strange talk, but that kind of talk and speak is very common in New Age thinking. She says she wants to go to this realm where prayer is answered. And I'm not teeter tottering where sometimes it's answered and sometimes it's not. I want to go to that place. So there is a place for her in the spirit realm where you can always get your prayers answered. It's like candy land. You know what I mean? It's like candy land. I want to go to that place of answered prayer. And so if I'm going to do that, I'm going to have to be able to travel mm -hmm. You heard it right. Mm -hmm. Travel. That's yeah, it sounds like astral projection. Yeah. Because she's actually talking about going to a location, going to a place spiritual. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to have to be able to travel in prayer to that third dimension. Yes. So if there's a third dimension, then there would be a, a second and a first dimension. Yeah. 
And she's got to go way beyond those two dimensions to this particular realm in prayer where what? Mm -hmm. So that I can get the mind of God, which sits in the God world. The activities of God, the activities of the God world, what he has prophesied and what he has promised. So out there in the God world, there is um, the activities of God and things that he's prophesied and things that he's promised out in the God world. Like yep. Not in the word now, right. but out mm -hmm. in the God world. And you got to travel to the God world mm -hmm. through a vehicle called prayer, according to Juanita Bynum. I have to be able to position myself to be able to hear that. So once I hear that, I believe that because I've heard from God. And once I've heard from God, then I don't have to struggle with whether or not I will see it from God. Because if he spoke it, he's going to do it. And so my passageway... All of that language mm -hmm. is about um, traveling. It's about going from one place to the other. A passageway into that God world mm -hmm. is through, there's more of that travel language, that open door. Yeah. See how she just kind of completely mangled Revelation chapter 3. Completely mm -hmm. mangled it. No consideration, no concern, no care whatsoever for the historical meaning at all for her it's a open door into the god world and she he was referring to the revelation chapter three and what she was referring to those of you who've been coming to our our classes um, on the book of revelation you would know what we're talking about um yeah, the, the the church of philadelphia is where she brings up and she totally screws it all up all right, so I'm gonna talk about the prayer cloth in a minute. And there are other Facebook posts that are out there that I found quite quite gripping. And then in walks our dear brother and friend here. <laughs> How much is it now? All right, hold on. <laughs> okay, I'm looking at the one in the bottom thing. This is not an issue for me. How much is it now? The course is originally one thousand nine hundred dollars, nine hundred dollars and ninety-nine right. cents. Right, but it's that's not how much it's like fifteen hundred. It's fifteen hundred. Right? And how many? And it's like seven classes. Seven sessions that are two hours long. So how many? That's fourteen hours. And what else? You get a Q and A at the end of each. And this is one the bottom teaching. One the bottom. And plus you get all these. You get a prayer institute tote bag. All of that. All right, that's enough. Enough. Look. Okay, now if you work a nine to five, I don't want you to say shit about this, cause you don't have the brain, you don't have the understanding for something like this. If you a content creator, I'ma say this, um, or an influencer, this um is cheap. I would do it, fourteen hours. There's no way in the world I'm gonna do a course. That's 14 hours with me teaching it for no $1,500. That just ain't going to work. This is a darn deal. This is a great deal. This is a darn deal. And he said, well, I need to buy them. It's a deal. 14 hours. <clears throat> I did an eight weeks course at the beginning of this year. I can't remember. Eight weeks. That's two months. Each course was two hours long. Anybody, there's several people who attended that course. Many of the bunkers were there. How much did I charge bunkers for that eight weeks course that went over two hours every course, every week, every Wednesday night? Two hours. How much did I charge? Last month, for four weeks straight, Jerome said nothing. Carlotta said nothing. Nothing. Candy says nothing. Nothing. Last month, I did four weeks. Every session went about three hours. Three hours. Every session on the book of Revelation. How much did I charge for that session? <laughs> Look at these numbers. Zero. This month, the month of September, I have been going over the book of Daniel. How much have I charged for that course? 
three hours per session and then turn around and do Thursday night follow up another two hours. How much did that charge? So this man here, y'all hear what he's saying? He said, I wouldn't do it. That's the problem. You wouldn't do it. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't do it. I have bills. Light, gas, water, car note, insurance, food, life. I mean, maintenance. Why? Because I love the people of God. So, Paul says, I have the right to receive. He says, but I did not take the right that was given to me. Paul still went outside and worked. He was a tent maker. Do you understand? He said, I have a right to receive from the church. When you read the text very closely, you'll see that he brought up muzzling not the ox, which tread out the corn. And those who sweat and work hard in the word should receive from the word. You better believe that. Then you got people like this who say, I wouldn't do it. We know because one I first started to play the video in the background. You heard ding, 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 ding. But that cash app was going crazy. I want you to, you think my, my spiritual father for 14 hours of him teaching? Not for no $1,500 per person. Y'all cheap. And ain't never built nothing from the ground up. Maybe you don't know what people pay people who have a brain or a gift or a niche that is superb that they can glean from. I don't these these coaches what they charge an hour and stuff. This is in fact this is too cheap. I wouldn't sign up for but number one because I don't know one even about them is I don't think she I, they know for her to teach me. She might teach my daughter something. She might can teach some of the women out here I know something. But they never. So he lifted her up and tore her down. He says, why well, need a bind him at the beginning? Shoot, she doing all this work? Now he's saying she can't teach me nothing. She might, he, she might be able to teach my daughter something, but she can't teach me nothing. <laughs> boy, boy, you talking about, but you, you talking about eating your own. <laughs> Somebody think I'm trying, I'm eating our own right now. No, I'm trying to expose uh, the, the wolves that are coming into your house. <laughs> oh, man, it's just difficult. And then Brian Keith Williams makes a comment. All right. I know this is going long, y'all, but I just want to equip y'all on the mythologies <laughs> that are going on right now. Okay. And then my dear brother Charles Albert Johnson III put up his post uh, about Brian Keefe says, uh, it's a bargain <laughs> for seven two-hour mentor sessions by Juanita Bynum, Dr. Juanita Bynum at that. Now y'all know where the doctor comes from, right? It comes from uh, one of those... Um, one of those degree meals. <laughs> it comes from one of those degree meals. That what they what they call them, y'all? Diploma meals. It's the diploma meal. These diploma meals are passing out doctor degrees like water. <laughs> All right, approximately a hundred dollars an hour. Access to forty plus years of credible and thirty years of expertise. Those who need it. Won't regret it. The reason why it's bargain is because, and here's what he justifies it here by saying the information and impartation will bring transformation. Here are those 
typical new age. I'm calling it new age now because we didn't hear about these words when I was coming up. All of a sudden, y'all keep creating these new terms and terminologies in Christianity. He says the information and impartation will bring transformation. What does that sound like? Then he tells y'all why. In 96, she came to my church and transformed it in seven days. In fact, God said, I'm going to do more in seven days uh, than has been done in 11 years. When Bynum left our church, we could never be the same. Within one year, we doubled the size, doubled the land, and doubled the building. Began daily TV, built our own TV. I preached all major platforms. She taught me in these seven days. <laughs> I got so much I want to say about that. I'm not going to do it. I don't know you, Brian Keith Williams, and I'm going to keep it like that. <laughs> yeah, look, you have to read what Charles Albert wrote. Charles, Charles, don't play. All right, I'm not gonna say nothing else about none of that. <laughs> okay. Now this prayer cloth. <clears throat> okay, I'm gonna read y'all what this. I'm gonna read an article on the prayer cloth thingy thingy. Okay, because. Um, the prayer cloth is quite popular. As y'all know, I have one here. All right. Prayer cloth is a cute, wonderful cloth that the Jews wore. Jesus wore this as well. And I've done many um, demonstrations on this cloth on my show. I preached it. Uh, in Connecticut, you know, I talk, talked about the seat, seat, the tassels, the fringes, and the woman who pulled on Jesus, uh, him, all right, the issue of blood. I talked about, I mean, I talked about all of this. And when you put it on, y'all know, I'm not going to put it on because <laughs> for obvious reasons, I'm not putting it on. What I have discovered about the prayer cloth is the romanticizing of Jewish culture. And I, here's where I started getting in trouble with the women folks. Jewish appropriations. It's a fascinating thing because Jewish culture is extremely romantic to women. A lot of men too, but especially women it is prince charming riding in on a horse it is romantic the talit romantic the blowing of the shofar is romantic and so usually women pastors first ladies women evangelists women prophets women apostles and all these terminologies and what have you they love the romance of the Old Testament culture of the Jewish people. I know y'all upset with me. And you're just going to have to get over it until something else come along better for you. So here's an article on the prayer cloth that which is not biblical. The prayer cloth is not even <laughs> It's not even biblical. <laughs> I'm sorry, y'all. I'm not trying to laugh at you. But there are several biblical accounts that, the, uh, that are basis for the modern practice of using a prayer cloth to assist the uh, prayer to receive positive. Now, to assist the prayer, the prayer. Notice what they did here. To assist the prayer to receive positive answers to prayer. So they used this cloth, believing that if they wrapped themselves with it, you will get into that other realm and what she talked about. Tell the story of this uh Matthew 9 20 tells about the story, the woman who suffered with the, the the issue of blood, all right? It should be noted that in none of these stories in the Bible is Jesus' garment or Paul's handkerchief called a prayer cloth. The first modern use of the prayer cloth may have been the Mormons. As the practice faded in Mormonism, it grew in the Pentecostal church. It now can be found even in the Rome, Roman Catholic Church. Sometimes the cloth are anointed oil or in the sweat of those who pray over it. 
it's either in the oil or the sweat. At its most innocent, the prayer cloth is merely a reminder that a group of people are praying for an ailing friend. That's it. So be careful, ladies. Be careful. Not to over romanticize a lot of stuff you see people charging for. And he, and he talks about here about y'all then making um, uh, you charging for these cloths and, and manipulating people to feel that they if they don't have it, then they can't get into that realm of God. It's gotten into a very unhealthy place with you all. Extremely unhealthy. All right. And then the article can uh, how can I have my prayers answered by God? Now, watch this here. I enjoyed this. Many people believe answered prayer is God granted a prayer request that is offered to him. If a prayer request is not granted, it is understood as an unanswered prayer. However, this is incorrect understanding of prayer. God answers every prayer that is lifted to him. Do you hear me? That sounds strange, don't it? God answers every prayer that is lifted to him. Every one of them. You're like, well, what happened to mine? Sometimes God answers no. A no is an answer. Or wait. A wait is an answer. God only promises to grant our prayers when we ask according to his will. No or wait. This is the confidence we have in appro approaching God that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. Did the Bible lie? Did he lie? Hmm? And if we know that he hears us, whatever we ask, we know that we have what we ask him. 1 John 5, 14. He didn't lie. He said no. Or he said wait. So wait. Wait. I'm 80 years old. Wait. And you might have got a no 20 years ago. You ain't here. What does it mean to pray according to God's will? Praying according to God's will is praying for things that honor and glorify God and or praying for what the Bible clearly reveals God will be God's will to be. If we pray for something that is not honoring to God or not God's will for our lives, God will not give us, give what we ask for. If it's not in his will, the scriptures even tell you, this is how you should pray. If it is the Lord's will, blah, blah, blah. How can we know what God's will is? God promises to give us wisdom when we ask for it. James 1 and five, it's right here in your Bible, y'all, is in your Bible. If any of you lacks wisdom, ask. What? Who gives generously to all without fault, finding fault, and it will be given to him a place, a good place to start is First Thessalonians 5 and 12. The answer is there. The answer, my friend, blowing in the wind. It's there, y'all. Here's the thing. There's two things that happen in, with you all where God never forgets. Number one, your tears. All of the tears you have shed in life, God takes those tears and places it where? Give me the answer. I need the answer. I found the answer. I learned to pray. I need the answer in the comment section. What do God do with your tears? Mm, mm, mm. Come on with the answer. It's in the book of Psalm. He takes your tears, Marlene says, and places them in a bottle. Mm. In a bottle. God's got millions of bottles in heaven. Just bottles, bottles, everywhere, everywhere, everywhere. Now, after that, in the book of Revelation, as we've been teaching, there are three judgments. 
There's the seal judgment. There's the trumpet judgment. And there's the bowl judgment or the vile judgment. But we, we consider, I like the translation of bowl better. Because with a vial, it's like a Coca-Cola uh, uh, head. You know, the Coca-Cola bottle does this. Or maybe Heinz ketchup, where you get all that liquid, all of that, all of that um, tomato <laughs> at the bottom. And then that, that bottle, it's called a bottleneck. The traffic, when, when traffic backs up and people are looking on the other side because that's where the accident is, that's called a bottleneck, okay? If it's a vial... Unfortunately, the liquid comes out and then it, it drips slowly through that vial. No, it's a bold judgment. Why? Because the Bible says God's going to take that bowl and what's in the bowl? Can somebody tell me what's in there? I'm preaching y'all. And again, I'm not asking y'all for no money. I'm going to put the cash app up there though. If you want to give. But if you never give, I got to preach the gospel to you. So God says, now there are saints up under the altar waiting to get in heaven. And God then took those black robes and washed them white. These are the tribulation saints. I don't care what you believe. Pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib, homilineas, preterists. I don't care what you believe. I'm telling you what I believe. All right. And those people are waiting and asking God, when, when are you going to revenge us? Wait, just wait for the other saints to come and join you. Then you could come on in here and he's going to take that bowl that is filled with the prayers of the saints. And he's going to turn it upside down and pour it on the world. Y'all better hear me. You better hear me, hear me, hear me. It don't have to cost you nothing for this. If you just look into the word of God and there's your answer. Your answer was there. Mm. Matthew chapter 6. Let me close this down here. Here's what it says about prayer. When we pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. Them Baptist deacons were, they were serious prayer warriors, wasn't they? They talked about the cooling board quite a bit. I tell you the truth, that is all the reward they will ever get. That's all you're going to get. You, you're standing on the street, you're standing in at, at the mega church with the bullhorn and the microphone at the pulpit doing all these elaborate uh, uh, prayers. He said, that's all you're going to get. But when you pray, go away by yourself. You don't need an institute. You don't need a conference. You don't need a revival. You don't need to be inside of a church. Pray by yourself. Shut the door behind you and pray for to your father. How? In private. Then your father who sees everything will reward you. Do you understand what I'm saying? I'm going to pray after this class is over. But that's corporate prayer. We pray for one another. But most of my prayers are done alone in private. Men should always pray and not faint. So if men should always pray, I'm not going to be with y'all always, which means I must do it in private. When you pray, don't babble on and on as the Gentiles do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again and again because you don't know what to say next. So you keep repeating your words. Don't be like them for your father knows exactly what you need even before, before you ask him. Then he said, now pray like this. This is a wonderful template on how to pray. Pray that is. This is not the Lord's prayer. It's not the Lord's prayer. Can y'all tell me where the Lord's prayer is found? Hmm? Where the Lord's prayer found? Hmm? Our Father in heaven, may your name be kept holy. This is a template. On how to reach heaven. 
I'm getting ready to save y'all $1,499. John chapter 17 is the Lord's Prayer. Because it is in that prayer he prayed for you. He prayed for the disciples. He prayed for himself. He prayed for you. He said, I ain't lost one but that son of perdition. Other than that, no man can snatch, nobody can snatch these men or these women or these people or these saints out of my hands, out of my, nobody can, you can't lose your salvation. Can't nobody take it from you. So here's where you save this money. Our Father in heaven, may your name be holy. You got to praise God and get his attention like my children do me. Dad, you look nice today. Dad, that suit, is that Armani? Dad, them shoes, man, they clean. Dad, dad, dad. I When they start doing that, I know they're getting ready to ask me for some money. And why are they yet talking about how good I look? I'm digging in my pocket or I'm cash apping them. Why are they yet talking? This is what we should be doing. God is going to cash app you when you start telling him how great you are, oh God. May your kingdom come. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. You are praising God at the beginning. That is how you approach God with praise. And then you finally have a request. Give. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Give. Give us today the food we need not Porsches not big homes not big raises not becoming a millionaire no give us the food we need and forgive us our sins because you're going to God dirty and then you walk away dirty he says here no forgive us because we might have done something or said something to someone as we too do the same thing, forgive those who sinned against us. Same thing. Mm. And don't let us yield to temptation. Y'all obviously know this is an NLT or another translation because it don't sound right to some of you KJV only folks. Don't let us yield to temptation. Lead us not. You're like, how is that possible that he's leading us into temptation? My mother used to lead me into temptation when she took me to the Jewel Osco store. Y'all got Piggly Wiggly and Kroger's and, and um, Winn-Dixie in the South and Myers in Indiana. But in Illinois, we had Jewel Osco or Cubby, Cub Bear, Cubs food that was. All right. That's what we had. What we still have. Now we got Walmart and other stuff. But my mother, when I was a child, would lead me down the cornflakes aisle. And they would put the corn, they would put the unhealthy sugary cereals at the on the floor. Because they knew that the children were short. And they put all the healthy stuff at the top because that's for the parents to pull. My mother led me into temptation. <laughs> but we had to go down that aisle because there were other things in that aisle that she needed. Lead me not into temptation. <laughs> Y'all better hear me. That's what he's saying here. Thou prepares a table before me in the presence of mine enemy. Eat up. And don't lead us into temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. If you forget, now here's the answer to it all here. I'm saving y'all $1,499. If you forgive those who sin against you, your heavenly father will forgive you. But if you refuse to forgive others, your father will not. I just saved y'all $1,499. And when you fast, don't make it obvious. 
How you doing? Oh, I, well, I've been fasting for 40 days. And, and your breath sure tells me you've been fasting. Obvious, as the hypocrites do, for they try to look miserable and disheveled so people will admire them for their fasting. I tell you the truth, that is the only reward you're going to ever get. Y'all, I'm sorry, but I got to shut this down. I know I went long, but I wanted y'all to see what we all up against when we come in contact with people like Juanita Bynum. Your daughters, your mothers, your sisters, and your aunties, and even the first ladies are in, in uh, mesmerized, are, are in, in a spell up under her leadership. They're in a spell. And when she went live in her car, where was, was she in her car? And she was talking about this institute and why y'all was going after her about it and saying, this is not, I'm not charging y'all to pray. And when she was b promoting the institute, I saw the comment section and all the women who were saying, I'm coming, I'm coming, I'm going, I'm going, I got my money, I'm ready, I, I already bought my ticket. Oh, man. And I said, Jesus, help us today because they are going to go to a conference where they are going to be pulled into this new age teaching that will never go away. And in walk this statute, for those of you who've been watching my uh, teaching on the book of Daniel, down here, the iron legs go into iron and clay, the 10 uh, kingdoms here, the 10 kingdoms, a new Roman empire. New age. New age. It is monoism. It all is God. If all is one, including God, then one must in conclude that all is God. There is a change in consciousness. If we are God, we need to know we are God. Number four, a cosmic revolutionary optimism is taught. There is a new age coming. There will be a new world order. The new world government, new age thinkers believe that there will eventually be a progressive unification of world consciousness. And your church is part of this and you don't even know it. Number five, new agers create their own reality. You heard Damon Richardson talking about that God place. They believe they can create reality by what they believe and by changing what they believe, they can change reality. Number six, new agers make contact with the kingdom of darkness, calling a medium, channeling, demon, and all this stuff. Better believe it. So again, trust me. I know that Juanita Bynum will be told of this video. She might watch a few minutes of it. She's going to have her staff to go look at my past and pull up some numbers and some records and pull this up and pull that out. I might be the next Linda Wilson when she go live tomorrow or the next day. You know. Listen. The bunkers and myself, we're used to it. We don't care. And when all of that go on and, and when it's all said and done, I'll be the last guy standing with the bunkers <laughs> and we'll still be preaching the word of God in spite of all of the darts that are thrown at us because we have put on the full armor of God. Let your face be like flints, you bunkers out there. Let your face be like Flint. Don't care what the folks say about you. Let them dig up everything they want to dig up. And when they get through laughing at any of your calamities in the past, you shake off the dust and you keep preaching the word of God in spite of it all. 
And the day is going to come when everybody going to close their eyes and never wake up again on this earth. And they are either going to open their eyes and see Jesus and he will be smiling or they're going to open their eyes and see fire. And then they're going to call on Jesus. But it's going to be too late. Don't let it be said too late. Those are the ones who are going to mock you, who were mocking you. Those are the people who like the rich man who didn't do anything for Lazarus and they both died. Guess where they both went? One went into the bosom of Abraham and the other one was hot. You understand? So all we can do is pray for the, not just Bonnie the Biden, but the people who are following her. All right. That God opened up the eyes of those of you who have cataracts in your eyes. I don't pander to anyone. I love my sister, Juanita Bynum. I love her and her whole family. But if my own brothers was doing what Juanita Bynum is doing or have done, I would too not protect them. I would too rebuke them for manipulating the people of God. I would do the same for my brothers or my sisters. And they know that. And this is why people hate me today. Because I don't pander. But I don't, I'm not a heresy uh, chaser, what y'all call these content creators that every time they turn on their content, they're always chasing somebody who is a heretic. Not me. As y'all know, when I go live every night, I talk about the word of God. I talk about some current events, what have you. And I do just don't spend my time exposing folks. Unless it's something so major and so egregious or everybody's talking about it that then I have to just speak on it. And usually when I do speak on it, I go another way with it so you can see the big picture and let's refocus and stop letting these people throw you off. Kilt. Refocus and get back to evangelism. What is the purpose of you here? What the spiritual gift that God has given you, what you doing with it? Huh? Is that all you're doing is looking at content creators? As they expose other people, is that all you good for? Hmm. Hmm. Is that is that all you good for? Your name is known as a con as as a heretic chaser. That's it for you. People can't even come to you for prayer, for an inspirational word because they're afraid of you. They're afraid of who you're gonna expose next. It might be them. That's sad and silly. If you can't open your email. And people are coming to you for prayer and in encouraging words or, or, or help me with this Bible text right here. When they don't come to you for that, you are a waste of skin. And it is not the charge that Jesus has given you. The Great Commission is that you don't just sit there every day and expose everybody on your YouTube channels. Every day? You got nothing else to do. You can't teach the people of God. They are hungry. And you have become a sleazy newspaper, a tabloid, Hollywood news. That's all you have become to the people. You are a waste. You are a waste of skin. And that's why they hate me. God, I thank you for your presence and for the people who are here. Many had to go or they just left because they knew that I was getting ready to pray. <laughs> they thought I was going to expose in a horrible, salacious kind of way and bring in all these receipts and just, as God, you know, that's not my style. My style is to educate and to show the people that the wolves are in town. They're not going anywhere and be careful of them. Whoever they are, I don't care how charismatic and sweet and, and I don't care how much tongues and, and the cute words that they use. They're still wolves. So the people may open their eyes. I pray for Juanita Bynum. She's still alive, which means there's a chance. There's a chance for her. She's got too many yes women and yes men around her. They need to be removed and so that she could be naked and so that she could see and others can see that there's something wrong. 
She needs to be in front of somebody who can tell her that there's something wrong and that she needs to be silent. But because she is in a leadership role where she is independent, it is very difficult to silence someone like that who's not under a denominational structure where you can be silent. People are afraid to even attempt an a coup or silence. They won't do it because she's not under any kind of bondage. She's her own empire. So God, clean house. Whatever you need to do, do it. And I do understand God because I'm not that ignorant to know that sometimes a person like Juanita Bynum is a judgment to the people who want it. So whatever this is, God, let your will be done. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 All right, y'all. I gotta go. I gotta go. I went to, I went long. I'm sure I went about two hours long. Seven hundred of you showed up. If you're on YouTube, go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you hit the bell notification, you have subscribed to the channel. And when I go live, your notifications will go off and I will be coming forth with something like this. This is what I do all the time. I don't change. <laughs> I'm the same skinny, big nose dude. Same guy. That's all you're going to get is the same dude. Okay. All right. For those of you who went to the, came to the tutoring class yesterday, I have not edited the class yet. I was just too tired today. So if you don't see it sometime one, two o'clock in the morning tonight, you probably won't see it then. You'll see it tomorrow, Saturday, throughout the day. All right. I love y'all. Take care of yourself. Those of you who gave the, the, the uh, I saw money come in through the super chat. Thank you. Y'all know I, I like to recognize that, but I'd I be missing stuff because I'd be too busy teaching. Those of you who gave through the cash app. Thank you. I, I, I'm humbled by when you do give. Even if I don't recognize it publicly, I, I, I'm humbled by what you do give, all right? Because somebody had a need today and I had to give to them and you all took care of that need. So thank you, all right? There's a lot of great men and women out there in ministry. Y'all know who they are. If you don't, they're out there. It might be a remnant, but they're there. Some good people out there. Pray for them that God continue continue to bless them so that they can pour into the people all right all is not hopeless all right there are good people out there uh, George Bernie blessing to you sir my mailing address is in the description below you're on YouTube I see you my P.O. box is in the description below on YouTube P.O. box 288827 P.O. box 288827 Chicago Illinois 60628 it should be there below. All right. I love y'all. Take care. Um, Amir, my grandson, always make his debuts after the show. I think he is. We're having dinner. And I think I'm going to pull up where he and his mama, they're just so precious. I just look at their relationship. I say, God, I thank you. My grandson, he's a happy boy. He's got a great mother. My daughter is one of the greatest mothers I know. Outside of my own mother, who's in heaven right now, my daughter. I haven't seen such a tentative, tentative, is that the word? Mother, like that in years. He's going to grow up to be a very healthy young man. All right. I'll see y'all tomorrow for Sunday school. Take care. Bye-bye. <laughs>
Fellas, does it seem like you can't get a good woman? Ladies, wonder why you can't keep a man? Then read The Four Women That Men Desire, Volume 1, by Sir Walter Jones to figure out how to break the cycle. Go to Amazon.com to get your copy today. It's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are? Sir Walter Jones Show. <laughs> Goodbye.